a lady to see in the outer office. She has no appointment. Will you see her? All right. Where's Miss Deering? Oh, your secretary's out to lunch, Mr. Vance. What's the name of the lady who's calling on me? I don't know. She can hardly talk, Mr. Vance. She just managed to tell me she had to see her. She's either awfully scared or terribly unhappy about something. Send her in, please. Come in, please, won't you? <coughs> Thank you. Sit down, if you will, and tell me how I can help you. Oh, Mr. Vance. Oh, it's quite all right. You're safe. Won't you calm yourself and tell me what's troubling you? Mr. Vance, I... I saw him. I heard him speak. Heard who speak? My husband. Well, that doesn't sound like anything to break you up this way. But you don't understand. No, I don't imagine I do. What's so unusual about seeing your husband and hearing him speak? He's dead. I buried him ten months ago. Stop that, Flo. Stop it. I'll stop it. I'll stop it when this plate cracks against your head instead of the wall. You little devil. Keep I ought to... Keep away from me. Keep away from me, George. I'll let you have it with this lamp. You wouldn't do that to your ever-loving husband now, would you? Would I? You bet I would. Take your hands off the lamp, sweetheart. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to talk to you the way I did. Honey... Honey, honestly, I didn't mean to. George, why do you do things like that? Honey. Oh, George. George, how'd a girl like me ever get tangled up with somebody like you, huh? How? Put your arms around me, Flo. That's the way. No, oh, darling. That's me. And honey, that's you. <laughs> Put darling and honey together. What have you got? Uh... <laughs> what a combination we are. We're either making love or making war. Married six months and not a dish left in the place. I've thrown them all at you. Your aim is bad, honey. With a dish, maybe. But it's pretty good with a gun. And I got a gun. Only, darling, don't ever make me use it on you. I'll miss you so. <laughs> Well, Vance, it certainly is an unusual situation. That is, if Mrs. Miller was telling the truth. I'm sure she was, Markham. I know it's no case for a district attorney. And I didn't come here to talk to you about it professionally. I am interested in your reaction, though. She said she buried her husband ten months ago. That's right. And she was wearing deep black, Markham. A black dress, black gloves, black veil. And I checked with the undertaker who had charge of the funeral. She buried her husband all right. The records show that a Daniel Miller was interred in Holly Oaks Cemetery just ten months ago. And his widow, who after ten months reverts to her former status as wife, claims she saw him on the street. Why didn't she go up to him? As she explains it, she was too stunned to do anything right then. By the time she recovered her composure, the man had disappeared. Uh-huh. What's your opinion of her story, Vance? I believe it. I believe she saw a man she honestly thought was dead. You mean a dead man has come to life? A corpse is walking around this city? To all intents and purposes, yes. I promised Mrs. Miller I'd do what I could to help her. She's on the verge of collapse. Yes. Well, call on me for anything I can do, Vance. Thank you, Markham. If you think of any way a man can be dead and buried and suddenly come to life, let me know, will you? <laughs> Now, you two men know what I want you to do. Look, Mrs. Miller, you told us, didn't you? What do you think we are, dopes? Uh, she might be right. Ah, we're always agreeing, always agreeing with everybody all the time. That's my brother. That's right. Yeah, that's what I mean. Okay, Mrs. Miller, you gave us the picture of your late husband. We got it. You told us where you think you've seen him on the street. We got that, too. We'll stick around that street corner till we see a guy who looks like the picture. And if we see him, we follow him to where he's living now. That's right. Uh, you see, she does it, too. Now, look, 
I don't want any slips on this. I have an idea that some way, somehow, my husband has returned from the dead. Uh, hey, I don't like that. Listen to him. He don't like it. He likes everything. I'll change his mind. Go ahead, Mrs. Miller. He left me a lot of money when he died, but he's probably working now somewhere in the neighborhood of the street corner where I saw him. I want you to find him. Okay, so we find him. Then what? He was dead once. See to it that he returns to his former status. Oh, you yeah. playing with that darn cat of yours again? Leave yes. him alone. Don't be funny, Flo. Keep reading your paper. Chang and I having fun. Come on. Fun hey, with a cat. Oh, brother. Well, I've got to go to work in a few minutes, and this is how I relax. Besides, honey, he's a full-breed Persian. Well, let him yeah. do something constructive with those hairs of his he keeps shedding over the rug. Teach him to crochet or something. Maybe yeah. he can make me a shawl. He's a good cat, aren't you, Chang? Real good cat, huh? Yeah. George. Yeah. yeah. You never told What's me anything matter? about where you came from what? before you married me. I was found in a cabbage patch. Don't get cute. On you, Come it don't here. look good. Yeah. I've uh, been boy. thinking about this for some yeah, but time. Here's some string. You know, I don't yeah. know a darn thing about what you were before mm. we were married. What about it? Don't talk to me like that. I'll bounce an ashtray off your head. Now, look, honey, we said there'd be no we more We said there'd be no oh. more battling if you talk to me the way I'm entitled to be talked to. Kid, let's understand things. I'm your husband. I think you love that cat more than you do me. Every time I think of you feeding him and brushing him, I could... Darling. Oh, honey, let's not fight. What were we fighting about anyhow? You see, it isn't important. You don't remember. Now, come on over here. Huh? Okay. <laughs> Get that lap of yours ready. All right. Ah, oh, here we are. Oh, now I know why we fight. Yeah? Well, tell me. It's so good making up. Like this. I've got a few minutes, Mr. Vance. What's on your mind? How good is your memory, nurse? Well, I'd remember you if I ever saw you again. Who wouldn't? Well, thank you. A nurse, about ten months ago, a patient named Daniel Miller was admitted to this hospital. The records say that you attended him. Miller. Miller, let me see. Appendectomy? No. To tell the truth, I don't know what he was in here for. His wife told me that he was in this hospital a few days before he died. But he was removed from here at his own request and died at home, as I understand. I know the man. You mean short, medium weight, dark hair? I've never seen him. Oh. Well, anyhow, I know whom you mean, Mr. Vance. I remember him very well. Uh, raised quite a rumpus around here about going home, and we finally let him. What was the matter with him? Do you remember that? Yes, I do. He'd been poisoned. Poisoned, eh? Well, that's something I didn't know. Accidentally, would you say? Figure it out for yourself. When we told him what was the matter with him, he said something like, she did it, finally. I want to get out of here. I'll take care of her in my own way. Close the door to boot, Joe. You want the whole world to hear what we tell Mrs. Miller? It's okay with me if they hear. Nah, everything's okay with you. Close the door. Sure, sure. Only it's a tight squeeze. There. Hello? Mrs. Miller? Yes? You know who this is? Yes. Go ahead and talk. She said talk, so talk. Shut up. What? Oh, not you, Mrs. Miller. Listen, we think we spotted the guy you want. Where is he? Well, that's a problem. We spotted him coming out of a building just now. Only he disappeared into the crowd before we could tail him. Oh. We'll get him tomorrow morning, sure. That is, if he works in the building, which he probably does. All right. Uh, sorry you lost him, but tomorrow will do. One more day isn't so terribly important when so many years depend on what's going to happen then. Thanks for getting me official permission to investigate the grave of Daniel Miller, Markham. No trouble, Vance. This might become something in my department after all, judging what you told me. About Miller's having been poisoned? Yes. I still want to know how he returned to life. 
In all my years of private investigating, I've never encountered that before. You want to see his grave, is that advance? I want to look into his grave, Markham. I've talked over the phone to the man in charge of the cemetery, and he'll take us out to the spot where Mr. Miller is buried. All that we need is for it to be raining, and this would be a perfect setting. <laughs> Late at night, a cemetery, a corpse that walks and talks. What else do we need? Eh? Some idea as to how this case will end. It would all be so simple if only Mrs. Miller were lying about seeing her husband. She wasn't. I'll personally guarantee that. Well, let's go. The cemetery caretaker said he'd meet me here at the gate. Do you see him? No, but then I can't see anything at all. <laughs> what was that? Well, let's make it who was that. I'll feel better about it. Hey, who are you? Where are you? Uh, right here. Scared you, didn't I? <laughs> yes, you certainly did. Why aren't there any lights on around here? The people we got around here couldn't see very good if there was lights. <laughs> well, Markham, you know what they say about a foolish question. Yes, remind me to apologize to the tombstones as we pass. Now, look here, you... Uh, the name is Mort. Rather appropriate, too, in view of this setting. Huh? Mort means death in French. He does? Well, <laughs> what do you know? Uh, you must be Vance and Markham, you two, right? Were you expecting anybody else? Nobody I could talk to. Uh, come this way, please. I'll show you the grave you're looking for. Uh, Daniel Miller, right? Right. That's correct. Well, he ain't very important around here. Only two autos at his funeral. Now you take that grave over there. There's a man who should have been glad to die. Uh, 22 autos and the speech has lasted two hours. In the rain, too. Doesn't it always rain at funerals? Mm, only seems like it does. Now you take this grave over here. Kind of like this and like that. It was Excuse exactly me, what Mort, I... but who were in the automobiles at Mr. Miller's funeral? In the two cars? Well, uh, there were a couple of men from a lodge he belonged to in one, and his wife was in the other. Crying her eyes out, she was. Uh, she did pretty good for the guy. The uh, fact is, I ain't seen better crying this year. Where is the grave? A man in a hurry to get to the grave now. That's a good one, eh? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's right here. I dug it up like you told me to. Only I didn't touch anything. Why not? I wasn't told to. And besides, I wouldn't even if I was told to. I'm uh, superstitious. Markham, mark this day down in the book. We have now heard everything. Well, we've got a job to do. I'm going to hop down into that grave. I wouldn't if I was you. Why not? On account of a lot of reasons, only one of which is important. And that is? There ain't no casket, there ain't nobody, there ain't nothing in there. What? That's right. I dug up the grave like I was told to do, but I could have saved myself the trouble. Somebody else must have wanted what you fellas wanted and beat you to it. That grave was empty. This is just you, Attorney Markham. The case we're working on concerns the reappearance of Daniel Miller, ostensibly dead and buried ten months ago. When Miller's widow comes to Vance, she insists she saw the presumably dead man on the street. Logic or explanation for the case is completely missing, especially inasmuch as an examination of Miller's grave reveals no body. Vance has gone to check into more details, and we are at a loss to explain any other characters in this situation, including two men who are... You know, I just thought of something. Us two guys keep hanging around on this street corner. People will think we're a couple of bums. Shut up and keep looking. I can look and talk at the same time. It's easy. Ah, you're getting on my nerves at this job. is nothing to do but hang around here watching a building. I'm going to get... Hey, hey, Joe, there he is. That guy who just came out of the building, that's the guy. It sure is. What do we do now? We follow him. Only this time we don't lose him. Come on. Yeah. Uh, don't we call Mrs. Miller like she told us to? We call her after we call on that guy who just came out of the building. The shot came from this house, officer. I heard it. I call the police right away. Who lives here, do you know? Of course I know. I live next door, don't I? Mr. and Mrs. Ward live here. Came to live here just after they were married about eight months ago. 
Fight? Huh. Used to fight all the time, day and night. Day and night. I've never uh, seen Front any... door's open. Come on in. Hello there. Anybody home? Anybody home? Is she? There's nobody home. Can't blame his wife for not staying home much. Can't blame him either. She had the temper. She's always flying off the What's handle. What's in that room there, do you know? The one with the door closed? Yeah. That's probably a bedroom, which is my house. All these one-story bungalows built just about the same. Just about, I'd say. You take that... I'm door... going to take a look in that room. Uh, I'll go with you. I'm not afraid of anything, as long as you're here. That's real brave of you. Now, just a second while I take a look in here. Oh, hey, hey, oh hey, that's a cat. Close the door. Close the door. I can't stand cats. I've never been able to stand cats ever since I was a little did, boy. I never did forget... you, uh, did you see what was next to that cat? Well, no, I really didn't. I was so scared by... That cat was standing next to a body. A body of his master, I'd say. And the master was dead with a bullet hole in his forehead. Hello, Philo Vance speaking. This is Markham Vance. How many cases have you helped us solve, Vance? Why, I don't know. Why do you ask? Because we've finally been able to help you with one. Oh? Huh? Yes, a man known as George Ward, who lived with his wife at 10 Jackson Road, was found murdered a little while ago. Yes? Merely as a matter of procedure, Homicide Sergeant Heath took his fingerprints and checked them. He found that George Ward is really Daniel Miller, the man you've been looking for. Well, that's very interesting. What were the circumstances of the murder? Well, Ward, or Miller, was shot with a small caliber revolver. When the police officer on duty came into the room, the body was being guarded by a gray Persian cat. It belonged to the wards, as I understand it. I see. Well, thank you for calling, Markham. This is beginning to make some sense to me now. It is? Definitely. I believe I know what happened to Daniel Miller ten months ago, but I'm not sure. How do we find out? How, Markham? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Why, by finding out who killed George Ward, of course. Let go of me. Let go of me, copper. If I ever get in my house, I'll break a plate over your head. Let go of me. Easy now, Mrs. Ward. Take it easy. All I want to do is take you downtown for questioning. Orders were to pick you up now that your husband was murdered. I don't know anything about this murder. I was downtown shopping. I heard about it on the radio, and I came straight out here. Are you going to let me alone? Sorry, Mrs. Ward. i got to take you downtown. That's my orders. Sergeant Heath wants you brought in. We understand you and your husband have been doing a lot of battling, and the sergeant... The sergeant wants to see me, does he? All right, I'll go with you. Let me stop at the dime store first. I want to get a couple of plates to break over his head if he tries to say that I killed George. <laughs> Okay, Mrs. Miller, you heard the radio. Guy named George Ward was killed. That was the guy whose picture you showed us. It sure was. It was his picture you showed my brother and me. We followed him to his house, a bungalow, and then we knocked him off. And uh, now you want to be paid. That's right. It ain't wrong, lady. Shut up, you. Everybody tells me to shut up. Now, look, you two followed orders. You did as you were told. But how am I going to be sure the man you killed was my former husband? Oh, dear, this black dress. I could get your wisp room, lady. Never mind. You got a point there, Mrs. Miller. You couldn't be sure that Ward and your husband was the same guy. Suppose we wait till tomorrow when you see the pictures in the paper. That ought to be proof enough for you. Sure it should. Hmm, sounds all right. Suppose you two come around here tomorrow night and I'll... Nothing doing. Uh-uh, nothing doing, lady. Why not? I don't know. Ask me, brother. Well, why not come around here tomorrow night? I... I'll pay you then. Mrs. Miller, by tomorrow night, you could be a thousand miles away from here. You got what you want. You're really a widow this time. All the dough the guy left, you know you can keep now. You don't have to worry about his ever coming back and throwing you out on your ear. You're pretty smart, aren't you? We sure are. I'm smart enough to know the score. No, lady, you're going to have company until them papers come out. Joey and me, we're staying here. I won't have you in my house. I'll have you thrown out. Sit down, lady. You, well, you, you pushed me. You, you dared to push me. Why, why I could have the both You'd of you. You'd go to the chair, too, Mrs. Miller. You hired us. Remember it. Oh, expecting somebody? No. Well, get rid of whoever it is. Yeah, get rid of him. Both of you stay here. Oh, no, I'll go to the door. And I'll stay right behind it in case you get cute. Come on. I'll uh, stay here, huh? You want me here? That's right. All right, Mrs. Miller. Open it up. Mr. Vance. Good evening, Mrs. Miller. 
I believe I have some news for you. May I come in? Not right now. I'm busy. It won't take a minute. There we are. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you might have had company. My name is Vance. Well, change it. Your friend isn't very sociable, is he? Seems to me I recognize him. Isn't he one of the Dilling brothers? The police are looking for them. Vance, I've got so much to tell you, but arrest these two men. They're murderers. They killed a man known as George... You've got <gasps> a big mouth, lady. And you've got big hands, my friend. I don't like women being slapped. No? How much don't you like it? This much. <laughs> Hey, hey, what do you think you're doing to my brother? I huh? think I've already done it. Yeah? Well, I can take Stay care right of you. Stay right where I... you are. I don't want to have to use this gun. Now, suppose we all relax and we finish this business that was started in my office yesterday morning, Mrs. Miller. What are you doing? Oh, oh I'm sorry. These black dresses, they pick up everything. I was just trying to get some lint off. You got some of the lint off, Mrs. Miller. But your dress isn't entirely clean yet. Oh, is there something else? Yes, but it can wait. You're surprisingly calm, Mrs. Miller. Why shouldn't I be? You're here. I have nothing to fear now. Have I? I don't know. Did you ever meet a man named George Ward? George Ward? That's a man these two brothers admitted to me they killed. Why, you Shut idiot! Up. They said he... They said he was my husband. That's why they were here and they tried to blackmail me. You never saw or knew Ward? No. Vance, I thought my husband was dead until I saw him on the street the other day. I never saw him again, never. If he changed his name to Ward, I didn't know it. That's entirely possible. You... you believe me, then? I believe that seeing your husband on the street was a great shock to you. I believe you honestly thought he was dead. I believe you didn't know he was living under the name of Ward. And I also believe you murdered him early this evening. <laughs> Markham, you're entitled to an explanation of this case, and you're going to get it. The entire explanation. Will you tell him, Mrs. Miller? You tell him. You're the genius. Well, ten months ago, Daniel Miller left a hospital knowing his wife had tried to murder him by poison. He went home and bribed an undertaker to bury an empty casket. That was to fool his wife, who was not in town at the time, but returned in time to go to the funeral. Oh, that's what he did, eh? Sure he did. But I got him just the same. I had to kill him. You hear me? I had to. I couldn't stand him when he was married to me, but it was worse when he was married to another girl. And I'd kill him again if I got the chance. I, I'd kill him Better again. Better take her out of here, Burke. Right, Mr. Markham. Come on, you. Let's get going. You'll never send me to the chair. I'll say I'm crazy. I'll, I'll say I'm insane. They'll never be able to kill me for what I've done. Come on, out. You only think you... Well. Hmm. Well, Vance, where were we? We were talking about how Miller had himself buried in an empty casket, which he later reclaimed. Yes, yes. What happened after that? Daniel Miller then disappeared and adopted the identity of George Ward, marrying another girl and starting an entirely new existence. Uh-huh. Then Mrs. Miller saw him on the street and realized he wasn't dead and might show up at any time to either accuse her of attempted murder or throw her out in the street. So Mrs. Miller went to you. That was a mistake. But she was so confused at the time, she couldn't even talk, much less think. However, she realized later she had to keep away from me. And she did. And hired the Dilling brothers to wait on the corner where she saw her husband and try and follow him to his new home. As I understand it, they did. Then later came back to Mrs. Miller, who they insist didn't know where her husband was living. But Vance, the Dilling boys wanted to be paid for the murder. Why didn't you think they did it? I was sure Mrs. Miller did the job. You see, what happened was this. When the Dillings spotted her husband, she was watching them. She followed them in a cab while they were following her husband. Sounds like a parade. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how she found out where Miller was living, eh? Yes. You reason that she got into the house before they did, by the back door probably, and killed Miller. The Dillings found the husband dead, but they tried to get paid regardless. Exactly. Uh, we have Mrs. Miller's confession, of course, but I knew she was guilty because I saw that on her black dress there was a long gray hair, a hair that could only have come from a Persian cat. Of course, the Persian cat. Now, you had told me that the man who was murdered had a Persian cat. Yes. Well, the combination of circumstances 
couldn't be coincidence. Your laboratory has a hair from that cat and from Mrs. Miller's dress. I'm sure they'll match. I'm sure you're right, Vance. Just as I'm sure Mrs. Miller has reached the end of the line. And we've reached the end of the talking corpse murder case. <laughs>